Hello, this is part two of a lesson on velocity time graphs. In part one, we saw how to work out acceleration from the gradient. In part two, we're going to see how to work out displacement from the area of the velocity time graph. We'll need a pen and paper as there are exercises for you to try as we work through. So if you need a pen and paper, now is a good time to pause the video to get them. Let's start with the problem. Here's a velocity time graph. Look at the axes, velocity meters per second, time seconds, and we have a constant velocity of 16 meters per second. There are some questions, let's go over them. Can we find the distance moved in 10 seconds? Can we find the displacement covered in 10 seconds? And can we find the area under the graph? And by that I mean the area between the yellow line and the time axis, marked in red. You should try these for yourself before I go through the answers. So pause the video and try these for yourself now. Well, I hope you've had a go. Here are the answers. Distance is speed times time. The speed was 16 meters a second. The time was 10 seconds. 16 times 10 is 160 meters. The displacement is, we should really say, average velocity times time. But it's a constant velocity, so the average velocity is the same as the constant velocity. I'm using S for displacement. It's plus 16 meters per second times 10 seconds plus 160 meters. The plus sign isn't compulsory, but it's to remind you that we know the direction. It's 160 meters in the positive direction. It corresponds to the distance, of course. And the area? Well, we don't want the area in square centimeters. The area represents something. When we work out the area, it's 16 meters per second times 10 seconds. And that gives us 160 meters. And this is an important point. The area is the same as distance and the displacement. Let's do another one. Here's the velocity time graph. This time, the velocity is minus one meters per second for five seconds. Then it suddenly increases and it becomes minus two meters a second for another five seconds. Some questions. Can you find the total displacement? Can you find the area under the graph? Now the word under is a bit misleading. What we mean is the area between the graph and the time axis. Let me mark it. It's those blue blocks that represent the area in quotes under the graph. So pause the video, try those for yourself. Let's go over the answers. The displacement, we can do it in two sections. The first five seconds. Velocity times time is minus one times five. And for the next five seconds, the velocity is minus two, and the time is five. If you work those out, minus 5 and minus 10 give minus 15 meters. So the thing has moved 15 meters in the negative direction. What about the area? Well, the area, it's exactly the same calculation. The area, the first block, is minus 1 times 5. And the next block is minus 2 times 5. And it comes to minus 15 meters. So we've got the area representing a negative quantity. And we treat area underneath the time axis as being negative, corresponding to a negative displacement, movement in the negative direction. This works just as well if we don't have flat lines. We could have straight velocity time graphs or even curved ones. The area tells us the displacement. So on the left, the graph is in two sections, really. 
that blue triangle represents the negative displacement and the area marked in red a positive displacement and if we had a value, a negative value and a positive value we could add them to get the total displacement even if it's a complicated curve shape the area tells us the displacement the area corresponds to the area marked in red and you may ask why should this be true and I'll quickly go over a sort of proof or an explanation of why the area is always the displacement here's a general sort of shape any old shape for a velocity time graph we can approximate the movement by splitting this into lots of small movements at constant velocity so we're going to break down the motion into a series of movements each at constant velocity what do I mean? Well, let me do the first movement can you see that small rectangle there? if some, something was moving at a constant velocity for a short time that would be the rectangle that would give us a displacement let's just enlarge that the rectangle has a small width, call it delta t, time interval and a certain height corresponding to the velocity, steady velocity I could repeat that, I could say then we'll speed up and move at a steady velocity for another short time get a second rectangle, the, second, the strips, narrow rectangle strips I could repeat this, moving at steady velocity for a short time and then changing the velocity moving at that new velocity for a short time and gradually perform motion that is close to the original yellow graph not exactly the same but very close to it and I've broken down the original movement into a series of small movements at constant velocity represented by each of those little strips now the area of one of these strips which is a velocity times a time interval represents a displacement during that short time interval that's the important point the area of one strip represents a displacement and we've got lots of them so the total of all these little areas is roughly the same as the total area under the yellow line the original yellow line and the sum of the strip areas approximately equals the displacement I could have more strips shorter time intervals delta t <coughs> excuse me and lots more strips and if I had millions an infinite number of strips the time interval would be zero and we say that in the limit of the time interval tending to zero which would imply many strips or an infinite number of very narrow strips the total area of all the strips will be the total displacement and it will be exactly the same as the original yellow line now if you're familiar with calculus you'll recognize this as integration if you find that concept difficult you might want to read through what's on the screen uh, we're not going to spend too much time on it I'm merely illustrating the derivation of the fact that the displacement corresponds to the area and it works for any shape velocity time graph okay there are four problems for you to, tra to try out for yourself so problem one there's a velocity time graph and there are two questions find the total displacement and find the maximum magnitude acceleration pause the video have a go for yourself let's go through it the total displacement will be the total area so let's work out the area if you're familiar with the area of a trapezium which is this shape it's easy but if you're not we can split it into two triangles and a rectangle let's go through it let's do the first triangle in red on the left and that's for the time interval 0 to 3 seconds the area is half base times height the base is 3 the height is 20 so you want half of 3 times 20 it's 30 meters displacement the middle bit and the end bit are worked out in the same way you can work through that yourself if you want to check them 
and when we add up the three separate parts we get 130 meters. The other part of the question is what's the maximum magnitude of acceleration? By that we mean we don't care whether it's a positive or negative value but what's the acceleration with the biggest magnitude ignoring the sign and if you remember acceleration you'll know we can work out the gradient to get acceleration the biggest gradient here the biggest magnitude will be the one between seven and nine seconds because in both cases the velocity changes from naught to 20 20 to naught a 20 meter per second change but this takes three seconds and the one on the right hand side only takes two seconds so that will be the biggest acceleration and it'll be 20 over 2 which is 10 meters per second squared it's actually minus 10 meters per second squared but the question does call for the maximum magnitude of acceleration so we don't use the minus sign when we give a magnitude. Here's another problem. Another velocity time graph. Look at it carefully. And there are two questions for you. Find the displacement and the total distance. Pause the video. Try it for yourself. Well, let's go through it. We do this by working the area. There's one area which is positive, one area which is negative. We're going to work each of them out separately. So the first three seconds, that's a red triangle, half the base times height is half of three times 20. It's 30 meters. And for the second triangle, the one in blue, it's base of four seconds from three to seven is four and the height is minus 25 so it's 4 times minus 25 divided by 2 gives minus 50 meters so the total displacement is 30 plus minus 50 which is 30 minus 50 minus 20 meters and the distance we don't bother about the minus signs we know the thing has moved 30 meters in one direction, 50 meters in another direction. The total distance covered is 30 plus 50, which is 80 meters. If you were asked for the average velocity, you would divide minus 20 by 7 seconds. If you were asked for the speed, you divide 80 meters by 7 seconds. Let's do another problem. This is another velocity time graph, but it's a curve. And the question is to estimate the displacement. And when you see the word estimate, it means an exact answer isn't required. Just a, a rough, not too inaccurate, but a rough value. So pause the video, look at that, and see if you can sort out what the displacement is. Pause now. I hope you've tried that. The problem is to find the area under this yellow curve. And I prefer to do these by drawing a simple shape which has roughly the same area. Now the easiest shape to draw in this case I believe is a triangle. Let me draw it in purple. I think that triangle in purple has roughly the same area as the area under the yellow curve. It's got a bit missing here and a bit extra on top and I think they cancel out. In fact, let me show you those two. There's a bit missing. There's a bit extra, but the rest of the thing is the same. And I think the red bit cancels out the blue bit. So the purple triangle is roughly the same area as the yellow curves area. So I'm going to work out the area of the purple triangle half base times height. Well the height is about 8 roughly. The base, I hope you spotted this, is 8 milliseconds, not 8 seconds, 8 milliseconds. So the area will be the displacement and that is height 8, base 8 milliseconds, 8 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds. Divide it by 2, half base times height gives 0.0 032 meters and that's an estimate of the displacement 
And the final problem, a tricky one. Here is a velocity time graph for two cars. Car B, the blue line, is going along a steady velocity of about just over 30 meters per second. Car A starts from rest and picks up speed, it accelerates. Let's suppose car B passes car A when the time is zero. So at this point here, time zero, car B passes car A, it's level with car A. Your problem is to estimate how long car A will take to catch up with car B. Pause the video, think about that carefully. hope you've had a go. First of all, don't fall for the trap of picking this point where the lines cross, which is about 1.4 seconds. That's not where the one car has caught up with the other. That's the point where they have equal speeds, but it doesn't mean they're at the same position. They're not level with each other, so one hasn't caught up the other. The secret is this. Car A has caught up with car B, when they have covered the same displacement. That means when they're the same distance from the start point. When time was zero, they're at the same place because the cars were level. So we need to find out where they have covered the same displacement. Now the area under the graph is uh, given by the f yellow curve and the blue line. We need to find where those two areas are equal. We can only do that with a bit of judgment. So what we're going to do is imagine putting a ruler onto this graph and sliding the ruler left and right. What we're trying to do in our mind is get the area under the blue line the same as the area under the yellow line. And this has got a bit missing and a bit extra, so it's a bit of judgment to get the yellow area and the blue area about the same. And I guess that it's about 3.4 seconds where the two areas are equal. Let me show you the two areas. There's the area under the blue line when we've got the ruler positioned as it is, and there's the area under the yellow line, and I reckon they're roughly the same. So I would estimate that the time it takes is about 3.4 seconds, because after 3.4 seconds they've covered the same displacement, that the same distance from the point where they were originally level with each other, therefore they're now level with each other again. Okay, that's it. So uh, I hope that helped, and thank you very much for watching.